Hey guys, HDV here and welcome to a brand new video. Today we've got some new rumours to go over about Pokemon Day 2024. Of course, they are posted on 4chan, so always take them with a grain of salt. But there's some really cool stuff in here about the new Generation 5 games, Generation 2. A lot of stuff to break down today, so if you're excited for the video, as always, make sure to drop a like down below. Let's try and hit 500 likes, it really helps out. Leave a comment with your thoughts on anything we cover in today's video. Subscribe if you're brand new for daily Pokemon content. Ring the notification bell. With all of that out of the way though, let's get into the video and I really hope that you enjoy. So, starting things off, this is the latest rumor for Pokemon Day 2024 and the presents that we're going to be seeing on that day. It was posted on the 28th of January, so a few days ago now. Uh, and they start things off by saying Pokemon Presents 2024. So, Pokemon Obsidian Black and Quartz White. So, apparently these, I'm assuming, are going to be the Generation 5 games, whether they are Faithful Remakes or black and white through or whatever apparently they are going to be called obsidian black and quartz white so it's made by ilka but the art style is unlike bdsp um so the art style i'm assuming wouldn't be chibi if it was made by um ilka but apparently they're make, being made by ilka so there's, there's a lot of rumors going around saying that you know johto's being made by game freak black and white's being made by ilka and then the the other way around and then there's only one game this year there's no games this year there's scarlet and violet dlc this year like that this is what I mean. This is why Pokemon Day is so exciting this year, because it generally could be any of those things. Um, but uh, yeah, apparently it's going to be made by Ilka, but the art style is unlike BDSP. So the games tell the story of both Pokemon Black and White and Pokemon Black and White 2 in one cartridge and save file. I just, I, I can't see how they make this a reality. Like, the games are completely different. Yeah, there are similar characters that obviously appear in both of these games, but they're literally set like two, three years apart. I don't know how you would be able to do it like it, it, it's completely different it's not like um i don't know like pokemon red and blue and then like pokemon yellow where you know it's the same kind of timeline it's just the different starters and stuff like these games are literally different games with different stories and the different locations and stuff like that um so i don't know how you put it all into one save file unless you complete black and white and then there's like a time jump and then you do black and white too but that's basically two games in one and i don't think pokemon are really going to do that um, but uh, either way, especially Ilka as well, like that would be a massive kind of um, project for Ilka to be working on. And they got quite a lot of backlash from BDSP. So I don't think Pokemon or Game Freak would entrust them with that level of kind of um, kind of just stuff that they have to would have to do in this uh, potential game. Uh, the trainer goes off to Blueberry Academy and comes back two years later with events staying the same, but dialogue changed to acknowledge you're the same protagonist. Um, and then apparently it's coming out in November 2024. So again a lot of rumors are also kind of um playing around with the idea of going back to the blueberry academy i understand that if we do get generation 5 games then potentially we could um go to the blueberry academy because it'd just be a nice little kind of call out to um the uh, the generation 9 games and stuff like that and we already know so much about the blueberry academy because we've already been there um but what would you do in that like is that is that like part of the story like you'd go to the blueberry academy you do a few quests there and then it like does a time jump or something like that i don't know what would really happen there would you become the champion in blueberry academy the thing is though if you play all the way through black and white and then you do the blueberry academy your levels are going to be very very high which means when you go back for the black and white 2 kind of era of the game all the levels would have to be like insanely high otherwise you just walk through everything so um again it, it feels very unlikely that that's the direction they would take i think if we were going to get generation 5 remakes it would have to either be black and white or black and white 2 i don't think you can really combine the two i mean fair play if they do and they make it really good then you know that'd be great i just don't see how that is a possibility i think if we are going to get any kind of black and white game this year it's either going to be a legends game or it's going to be black and white 3 those are the only two that make sense and again, as I've always said, Black and White 3 would be really cool if it was set 15 years in the future because, you know, next year will be 15 year anniversary of Black and White. And just like the time jumps were between Black and White and Black and White 2, 15th year uh, time jump would be really cool for Black and White 3 because you'd be able to keep some of the same characters. You'd be able to incorporate Lacey um, and other players that, and other characters that are in the Indigo Disc. I think it'd just be a really cool way that they would be able to do it all. But anyway, that's apparently uh, being made and it's going to be coming out November 2024. 
Next up, we have Pokemon Legends Celebi. So this is another game that a lot of rumors have been circulating about. I really like the, like the idea of a Legend Celebi. It makes the most sense because Celebi is the time travel Pokemon. Um, and, you know, I, I really, really enjoy Legends Arceus and I would very much like a Legends game surrounding the Johto region. Anyway, let's get into this. So instead of being transported back in time uh, once like Legends Arceus, Celebi brings you to different eras of Johto. Um, and then they goes on to say a prehistoric era where we see cavemen and paradox beast trio um so yeah it's not just one kind of time you you, you teleport to multiple different times which i think would work I, I i think in like on the world map instead of it being like different locations it would be like different time eras so like the top part of the map would be maybe i don't know like the prehistoric era that they they talk about here um, and then another one would be, like I say, the federal area that they talk about here, where that would be a different part of the map. And Celebi kind of time travels you to these different locations at these different points in time. I think it would definitely work, and especially because, you know, Celebi is the time travel Pokemon. That Pokemon is clearly capable of being able to do something like this. It just means that Celebi would always have to be, like, around you. So it'd be like a like a Cosmog situation with Pokemon Sun and Moon, but instead of Lily having Cosmog, you would have it. Anyway, the federal, uh, or the feudal area, should I say, uh, the most of the game takes place in tells Burn Tower and uh, the Resurrection story. So it'd be cool because you'd see these different points in time where we do have history of, like, um, the, the the whole Burn Tower situation. We'd be, it'd be really cool to see that. Um, obviously, with a Paradox Beast, that would be different because that's a different, that's not like a different, that's like a different timeline. Um, it's not like a different time era. So um, you'd have to obviously be able to go to different time eras and, and lines and stuff like that be able to see all the different paradoxes i don't think we'll see paradoxes again though i think they're just going to be in gen 9 and that's it and then we've got the modern era section is revealed to be johto during the events of red blue yellow fire red leaf green three years before gold silver crystal heart gold and soul silver explains how pokemon like slugma and houndour left and went to kanto entire game is level scaled and it's going to be early 2025 so around the same kind of time frame they're dropping this as they did with legends arceus i actually like the idea of this legend celebi game i like the idea of going to the different time points i like the idea of um the the whole kind of going to johto when we were playing as red because obviously johto takes place what like three years after red and blue so it'd be cool if we explore johto whilst you know we were actually exploring kanto if that makes sense so i'd really like that as a thing I like the idea of going to different time points, but either way, Legend Celebi, I think, is the most likely Legends game, but uh, I, I like that idea. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but either way, that's apparently the, the main series games that are getting made uh, this year and next year, so we'll be getting two, being this Black and Quartz White, uh, Obsidian Black and Quartz White in 2024, November, and then Legend Celebi in 2025, uh, early on, so I'm assuming it would be January, February, or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean... I don't I don't think it's true because I just can't see this black and white thing being true but either way uh, just definitely some more food for thought and it's kind of a direction that potentially uh, these games could go if they do end up being made and then anniversary years do not match to put Legend Celebi on the new console however we won't see the new console by then so they won't be mentioning this out loud um, so they're saying here that we won't see the new console by then I'm assuming they they're talking about the announcement of Celebi. So obviously, they'd announce Legend Celebi on Pokemon Day, you know, this month in February. Um, but obviously, the Switch 2 wouldn't have been announced by then. I don't think they mean that by the time Celebi comes out, the Nintendo Switch 2 wouldn't have been announced because the Switch 2 is coming out this year. So obviously, it would have to have been announced. Um, but uh, yeah, again, I don't think... I, I think the first game that we're going to see on the Switch 2 is probably going to be a enhanced version of Scarlet and Violet. I think that's going to be on the Switch 2 and then... You know, this year's game will probably be on the Nintendo Switch. I don't, I don't really know, but I could see something like that happening because it gets Pokemon on the next console, gets a good version of Pokemon on the next console as well because obviously it'd be not laggy and buggy and stuff like that. But um, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting what the Switch 2 kind of uh, gives Pokemon and everything like that. And then other announcements, entire Pokemon anime and all movies coming to Netflix in March. Um, so again, that could be a reason why they got rid of Pokemon TV. There's clearly you know, links between Netflix and Pokemon. You know, we had Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution. We have, you know, the anime on Netflix. We have Pokemon Concierge and stuff like that. So maybe they just drop it all on Netflix. I think that's unlikely. I think if they have, if they're going to drop everything somewhere, it would just be on their own kind of streaming service. 
Um, but they also say that Pokemon Concierge Season 2 is also being made. So, yeah, if it was going to pop up anywhere and they weren't doing their own streaming service, then it probably would be Netflix. But there's over a thousand anime episodes and, like, loads of movies and stuff like that to just all drop on Netflix. It'd be a bit mad. It'd be like a massive deal. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if I could really see that happening. And then moving on, Pokemon Masters EX. Uh, so we're getting more Scarlet and Violet characters coming to uh, this mobile game. And then also the original outfit of Ash as well, also coming to Pokemon Masters EX. Um, I'm assuming around the time of the Pokemon Presents. And this is all I know, and some has been uh, translated, so things might not be totally clear. So, all in all, like, there are aspects of this rumor that I do really, really like. I like the Legend Celebi thing. Um, I like the idea of a black and white game where you can play both in one. I just think that's very, very unlikely. It just It's just not cost efficient. For, for Pokemon and Ilka and stuff like that. Because that's basically two games in one. And I don't think they would do that. They may as well just, you know, do that in the future. But I don't know. That's just kind of my two cents on it. But um, yeah, I, I don't think it's true. But again, there are certain aspects that I do like of it. But either way, the next room we're going to move over onto today. It's not a very big one at all. Uh, but they start things off by saying Pokemon Day 2024. It was posted on the 29th of January. Posted by Anonymous saying, I'll cut the fluff and get to the stuff. But, uh, that people actually care about. So Pokemon Red and Blue. So again, another rumor talking about Pokemon Red and Blue ports will be available on the Nintendo Switch eShop shortly after the presentation. So that's exactly what the first rumor said. Um, so I don't know if these guys know each other and they're like, oh, let's put the same things in each of our rumors or they both have the same ideas or whatnot. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that if Red and Blue get announced for the Nintendo Switch Online, I think it very well could be for that, for, for, um, but for Pokemon Day, I very well think that they could get um, dropped on Pokemon Day. Although it kind of makes more sense to do Gold and Silver just because it's the 25th anniversary. Like, if we don't get a Johto game this year, I I could easily see us getting the ports of Gold, Silver, and Crystal. I would love ports, uh, ports of Heart, Gold, and Soul, Silver. I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, Gold, Silver, and Crystal, I could easily see on the Nintendo Switch Online just because it is the 25th anniversary. They will then go on to say, Red and Blue will also be compatible with Pokemon Home in March. I, I really love that. I love the fact that if they do port these games, they will be available for Pokemon Home. I feel like it makes sense, as I said, especially because Pokemon Bank is probably going to be closing down. They may even announce the closure of Pokemon Bank in this Pokemon Presents if they announce these ports. If they say, oh, these ports are coming to the Nintendo Switch, but we're getting rid of Pokemon Bank, like... That would suck because obviously it means like all of the generation four, five, six games that wouldn't be getting the ports uh, would not be able to then transfer Pokemon over. But at the same time, it is likely that Pokemon Ho uh, Pokemon Bank is going to be closing down soon. And then go on to say Pokemon Destinies uh, Curum is revealed. Developed by Ilka, takes place in an industrializing uh, Kalos. Appears to play similarly to Legends Arceus. Considerably better visuals compared to the last couple of Pokemon games. And the starters are Bunnelby, Swirlix and Helioptile. So that is the most random selection of starter Pokemon. I don't think we've ever had Pokemon that aren't actual starters as starters in the Pokemon games, barring a couple of spin-off games like Colosseum and stuff like that, where you got like Umbreon and Espeon and stuff. But I think in every main series title, we've always had starter Pokemon as options. Like, those three are just super random. It, it makes you feel like a ROM hack. Uh, the trailer ends with Kyurem Mega Evolving. The screen fades to black and a cry that does not sound like Kyurem uh, at all can be heard launches in fall 2024. So yeah, I don't think this is true at all. Um, really, that just doesn't sound... So, like, what a game for you developing this year. You know, if Pokemon Destinies, which is the main series, is developed by Ilka, <laughs> what a game for you working on? You know, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense. And this, I don't think is believable at all. This one, a little bit more so, but the end of it kind of where it does fall off a bit but either way let me know your thoughts on these uh two new rumors for pokemon day 2024 do you believe them do you not believe them would you like them to be true or not there's certain aspects that I would definitely like to be true like i would love the ports of the og games pokemon concierge uh obviously the unite stuff the, the ghost stuff the master stuff would all be really really cool but we'll see what happens on pokemon day but if you enjoyed the video drop a like down below it's trying to 500 likes like i say leave a comment subscribe if you're brand new ring the notification bell for daily pokemon content have a fantastic rest of your day and until next time peace